heard it, I was like a child, like, what? Like, oh my God. There's that certain honor and privilege, being able to represent your country and kind of fight for your country in your country brings. It's, it's a feeling that I think not a lot of athletes get to experience. Make sure you get your hips up and don't be so low. Up, 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 up. Guys, you have to make sure you're in the proper position from the stand start. You can't be all low trying to pick yourself up off the ground. I'm uh, Rosan Griffin, and I'm coaching the Philippine National Track and Field Team. I'm responsible for the uh, sprints, the hurdles, and the jumps. Guys, in this drill, you reach back. It's just like the forward running motion, except it's backwards. We are preparing for ultimately the SEA Games, but along that way, we're preparing for our national championships. We're preparing for the world championships. We're preparing for the world relays. We also have some athletes that are gonna compete in the World University Games. So it's a pretty busy year for us. Guys, remember drills go all the way to 30 meters. Today had two purposes. We were testing out a new timing system that is gonna be installed in the new Clark City facility that we're having for the SEA Games. And uh, it was our first time getting on automatic timing in order to uh, assess where we are in the preparation process for the upcoming season. Uh, you see that this disappears automatically and now it's copying the data from the device because we, we had him standing there so we have now recorded 4.7 megabytes of data. Red cone is the mark to be at. You're gonna have to come straight through this gate, just like this. Good. Today, we timed 30 meter flies. We timed stationary 40, 50, and 60 meters. And the timing system is a magnetic uh, gate system that has sensors that when that sensor goes through that magnetic gate, it automatically starts timing in real time. There you go, move them. Good. Gradually rise up and keep your arms fluidly moving. Okay, I would like to do three times the 30, and then we're gonna do a 40, a 50, and a 60. Speed it up. Good. You anticipate the barrier like you anticipate the, the hurdle. You tend to wanna to speed up, but that's not the object. The object is to get over that barrier or get through that gate as fast as you can. The use of this time is to give us an indication of, of where we are, uh, in comparison to the distances that we will compete in. So a fragment of that 100 meter distance is 30 meters. Another fragment of that 100 meter distance is 40, 50, or 60 meters. Guys, this is the last one. The rest interval in between has been sufficient enough to where your time should be pretty fast on this last interval. It gives the flat timing and, and the sequencing of where they are particularly in that race. Some of these athletes have barriers in the race, which are hurdles but it's, it still gives us an indication of what their flat speed time is. My name is Maureen Shrivers. I run 400 meter dash and 200 meter dash. Hopefully I can represent the country this Southeast Asian Games. Maureen is kind of a unique story. She was a somewhat of a high school phenom who just never really lived up to a potential in college because of injuries. I had a two-year hiatus because I pulled my hamstring three times, three consecutive years during my UAP season. I pretty much just gave up because I listened to what people were telling me and they said that my career was over, that I won't be able to recover. So I listened and I actually gave up and I was like, okay, I'm not gonna do it anymore. Sometimes those things come from the lack of structure in certain ways in a program. Uh, some of that can come from just not uh, tending to those injuries in the proper manner, giving the proper recovery. So she kind of missed the boat on uh, basically developing in the sport. After two years, I just, you can't really take away the love for your sport. I got back into running and I found out Southeast Asian Games is going to be held in our country. So what better way to come back than to represent 
the country really well. She felt as though she had the potential to bounce back after being injury free. And so she came to me and asked for help. And I thought that we had a decent enough chance to see if we could make a breakthrough. And that's the point we're at right now. For this year's SEA Games, to be able to qualify, we all have to keep joining competitions, keep improving our times until we hit a certain point where when they gather data, they'll be the one to choose. One of my main goals before I joined was to really have that focus again because after stopping for two years, it's not easy to go back to that discipline of waking up every day, eating the right thing, distancing yourself to other people. Not because you don't want to be friends with them, but just because some really won't understand how important the sport is to you. They won't understand when they invite you out, when you say no, it's not because you don't want to go out. It's because I need to wake up five in the morning and I can't risk that sleep that I'm gonna lose just for a party. The second goal would be to qualify because I remember before I decided to come back, I was so worried that I might not do well. And one of my coaches actually told me that just the process of getting to Southeast Asian Games is already an achievement. You shouldn't be beating yourself up, telling yourself you have to win because not everyone can go through that process of training every day, two times a day to get there. The last one is to win. I want to win because I want to come back. Like, I don't want to prove people that no, my career wasn't done and that I can still make it. And just to prove it to the people that I owe it to, my coaches, my family who supported me the whole time.